Hi everybody, welcome to Ghoul and welcome to this off-grid narrowboat solar PV and battery storage system that I'm going to walk you around today. Firstly, before I go any further, um, please like, subscribe and all that it helps the channel grow and I'd be much appreciated on that. Um, and also massive thanks to Adam and the Lemon Energy team who have helped us uh, deliver this project. But let me spin you around and I'll show you through what we've been doing. So this is actually for the mother-in-law's boat. So this is a bit of a passion project that we've uh, that we've done. So I've got these uh, two Trina 420 watt panels on. A couple of little bits to finish off. I've got some little caps to put on those at that M10 rod, but I've done it low because obviously these boats have got to go through bridges and everything like that. And I've bolted it basically to the grab rails all the way around. I've bent some M10 rod. I definitely should have used M6, but that's what I had. <laughs> and yeah, then put the unistrip across uh, and that, that then allows us to, to secure it on. Um, I've got a hinge at that far side as well, so that uh, if we ever need to change this panel, it can all basically unbolt here and then hinge vertically uh, to allow us access underneath. So I've just got some little uh, rod caps to go on the top of those when they come in. They're supposed to be in at the supplies, but didn't turn up unfortunately. So, so yeah, kept it at a low angle, like I say, so we could get it under the bridges and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good and it's been producing really well. So that's what we've done. And then, so what I've got, I've got a piece of PV Ultra. So this is just on one string. A PV Ultra can run as well. here round and then through into what is our little plant room so let me take you aboard shipmate show you what we've got <clears throat> so this is our plant room so we've got a victron uh, multi plus on here we've got an mppt uh victron mppt device there i've just got some uh just got some screw tie bases to finish up on there doing this video has actually reminded me that I've not done that yet so get some nice screw tie bases up there so that's all nice and neat um, I have then got a two of the lemon energy batteries and so they're lithium batteries and they go through these links devices so one of these links devices is our main feed out of our inverter um, and that then supplies our um, our existing system over here so we've got a, a link there to the engine bay, which um, which powers a little heater for the engine and stuff like that. We've got our uh, galvanic isolate here, um, a switching relay. I'll be honest, quite a few of these bits, I've absolutely been under the guidance of um, Adam from Lemon Energy, who supplied all this kit and kind of designed it and helped us install it because I am no expert in the off-grid world of things. But, um, but yeah, so we've got that a few little bits to tidy up then put a new little distribution board in here which is for the uh, circuits we've got some surge protection some double pole rcbos um so we've got starboard and port sockets because luckily this boat was wired um with a radial circuit either side so we've been able to split those out because previously they were all on one circuit which um which is fine but we wanted to split it out just to give us that ability to make sure if anything trips it doesn't shouldn't lose everything on the boat We've then got a the immersion heater supply, which is actually only a kilowatt immersion, which is through this switch here. So that's on there, which comes from a B16 RCBO. Um, and then I've also got in here another way ready for, I've got a starter battery charger that will basically be another RCBO just here, uh, which will supply a, a single socket or a double socket. Which I'll probably put just here, um, and then Adam supplied me a Victron uh, charger, which will just keep the starter battery happy. And he was saying that you can basically go two years without running the battery with the charger, making sure that the battery is um, is, is kept healthy. Because a lot of these dumb chargers just basically charge it up and then can just leave it do its thing and can damage the battery. So we're going to strip strip this out and put a, a fresh one in. And there's also a bow thruster battery, which we'll do the same with as well. So that'll then give us a full Victron system and uh, yeah, just make sure we're really protecting this, uh, protecting this system. So, um, like I mentioned, uh, Adam and Lemon, Lemon Energy has supplied these, um, supplied these batteries, so like they're lithium batteries. So I'm gonna pop out 
because he's quite rightly just said. So here he is, the man himself. He's been helping us with this one, or basically doing this one. I've just been passing him stuff. <laughs> but um, what was it? Both of those batteries, was it both those batteries down Both's there? Batteries. Are worth 12 of these. Was that right? Yeah, or 12 yeah. of the individual batteries. 12 of the individual ones, yeah. So those those batteries that we've installed, which are lithium, um, basically equate to 12 of these batteries, which is just shows you the density of, of lithium. Um, 8,000 odd cycles versus maximum 500 probably on there. Yeah, so 8,000 cycles on the, on the lithium and it was at 12, what did say, 1200 on about 500 on these, so just shows you the, the difference that difference that the lithium cell makes. So I'll drop you in here, I'll just show you what we've got. So just inside here, so like with a lot of systems, either on grid or off grid, these screens are the most important thing to people because uh, this is how they see what's happening. So I'll give you a little run through of this. So we've got the shore is disconnected. So even though we are connected onto the into the shore on the extension lead, we've turned the shore uh, power off, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, we are generating. Oh, that's the highest I've seen it. Nearly 700 watts. So it's dropped down a bit now. So that's coming from those two panels upon the roof. And you can see there that they're charging the battery at 375 watts, 30 amps, 13.31 volts, um, and. DC load with this boat there's um and probably most boats i've not got a huge amount of experience to draw on on that but there is uh, a set of dc loads so if i come down onto here you'll see that these are all the dc loads on the boat so we've got the cabin lights uh the, the forward cabin lights which are right the way down the front of the battery uh, the boat the normal lights which are these ones that i've got in here yeah so these ones in here uh, engine instruments which are at the back of the boat near the wheel and everything uh, water pump and the shower sump pump so uh, yeah so these are all the DC loads you can see we've got loads of these little DC halogen so we're thinking of changing these out because these use a lot, lot of power and there's, I think they said we counted up there's about 21 of them so we can reduce that but because we're monitoring all that we can see what the DC loads are so like I've got these lights on here at the minute um, so if I turn both those sets off see it's dropped the DC loads have dropped down to like nine so then that gives us obviously more more ability to uh, charge the the batteries up from the solar um, but anyway that's just that's the nature of it and then we've got the AC loads which are things like the fridge um, the sockets and everything plugged into those sockets through the boat so we can see what's happening there but what we've got on here is we've got this position switch so zero is off so we've got the shore plug in connected but we've not selected the shore power so if I change that to number one in about 30 odd seconds it'll come up that the shore is connected um, and then what that'll do is it'll automatically start charging the batteries up and that's basically so that there we go so now you see now it is it's just sorting itself out hear the hum so you can see it's boosting up now so our load hasn't changed but what we're doing now is we're charging the batteries so let's say the mother-in-law was going to shoot off and go cruising and it was middle of winter and she wanted to make sure she had a full battery the day before she could uh, charge up with the shoreline pull take the batteries all the way up to 100 percent and then when she pulled up and there probably wasn't a shoreline connection she'd have all of her batteries absolutely fully charged plus whatever she was able to generate through the solar so you can see there we're we're now our loads are still fairly low but we are um we're, we're starting to charge the batteries at like 1.4 kilowatts which is good so then <clears throat> if i turn it back off we're now then back on to the solar side of things so we're back on to normal kind of running and I think this is how she'll probably have it for the majority of the time so it's just over a three kilowatt max on this but we, uh, Adam was saying it can do about double the capacity I think it's just short of three to be fair with it in the KVA so it's like 2.4 or something like that so we can run it quite 
high for a short period of time until it gets too warm and then it will cut out uh, but for one person living on the boat i think we, we're pretty good with that we've also got this generator so whilst she's cruising um it can move to position number three which is there and then this little this little generator here if, if the engine was on and she was cruising that could then come on and basically do the same thing as the shore and start charging the battery so there's multiple different ways that we can do it Number two doesn't do anything now. That was part of the old setup where there was no real small inverter on this side here. But we've ripped all that out um, because uh, yeah, we didn't need that. We've replaced it with the with the larger one. So I'll turn that back to off. On here, we can actually monitor what what's happening. So uh, the bow thruster battery, we can we can see if we turn that to three, you can see the volts on here. So that one is a bit low. Um, which we know about. Um, then we've got number two, which is uh, like the starter battery. And then number one, which now isn't connected, which originally was the the battery backup, a bit like what we have now, but much smaller and much more DIY, to be honest. So uh, it's only really two and three that are used. So I can get rid of that one. It will come off. there we go so yeah so that's what we've got on this on the boat it's been yeah it's been really fun um on my side yeah it's been really fun on my side to learn a lot more about this sort of stuff because i've done a little bit of big tron stuff in the past but not to this scale um and adam and lemon energy have been mint because without without them helping us on this i would not have been able to do this on my own and just having all the right kit to do it as well and the know-how on, on a system like this has been absolutely bang on and so if you've got any off-grid projects that you want help with want to have supply design and um, probably installation with then definitely drop lemon energy a message on instagram or the website i'll put as much information as i can in the description of this video so you can get in touch with them but absolute recommendation from me um I uh, yeah, it's been really so been a good few couple of days. We've done this over a weekend, um, so yeah, I definitely need the help, and uh, I look forward to keeping an eye on this one to see how it progresses. But yeah, that's what we've got on our narrow boat, and I look forward to keeping in touch with this one and seeing how we get on. Thanks very much. So this system has now been working for about a fortnight as I record this now. So we can see a little bit of data on the uh, Victron app. Um, the boat's internet is actually running from the mother-in-law's phone. So this updates uh, every time she's back on the boat. So she must be on the boat right now. And so um, the system will start two days worth of information and then populate it when the internet is, is reconnected. We are investigating putting a, um, a like a 4G router and stuff like that in, but this is how it's working for now. So just a real quick run through of the boat and how it's been doing. So you can see here that uh, this is the main screen. We've got the inverter there in the middle. We've got the shore on the left, and we've got the AC loads in the boat on the right. You see the shore has got nothing, um, no data because it's turned off at the minute. So we're running completely on the off-grid system. So the AC loads equal 183 watts at the minute. We are generating, which is at the bottom uh, right of the screen, as you see it now, 239 watts. The DC power, which is the lighting and some other little bits is basically nothing at the minute. Maybe just a little bit of interference on that. So it's doing absolutely nothing on the DC side, which is good, so all the lights must be off. Um, so that means that our solar PV is going, you see the dotted lines going through up into the inverter and then over into the AC loads by the inverter for the majority of it. And then the additional 41 watts, which you can see in the on the left hand side where it says 59.8%, uh, that is charging the battery with 40 watts. So we're not wasting any of that power. Uh, we're not clipping any of that power. We are storing it or we're using it directly in the boat. You can see the boat's temperature is 32 degrees, so it's uh, very, very warm out there in uh, out there in Ghoul at the minute. But um, that is, yeah, that's the nature of, of being in a metal boat as well, I suppose. You can see here that we've got an input current limit of 13 amps. Now, when that is when the shore power is connected, 
the inverter will only allow 13 amps to be pulled from the shore. That was mainly because everything in the boat had been wired in 1.5 millimeter cable. It is flex, so it can go up towards the 16 amp um, uh, point, but we just wanted to be doubly sure, and so we limited the input current from the shore. And that, and because the inverter is the first point of connection on the boat, then uh, that can control how much power we bring in from the shore. If we come down now, so this is where we can see what's been happening today. So um, we've got the, if I can get rid of that, no, it's going to stay there. So you can see we've got the blue line, which is the state of charge of the battery. So you can see that it's dropping slowly in the early hours of the morning, and then it drops fairly rapidly uh, towards the middle of the day um, or in the morning. So what's that? That's um, between six and seven o'clock. It drops quite a lot. There's quite a lot of consumption. It then levels out towards the um, sort of eight, nine, ten o'clock, and you can see the orange there, which is the solar generation kicking in. And now we can see we're charging the batteries, and the battery state charge is coming back up. If I look at yesterday, you can see here that we had a similar effect. We had a sloping early hours of the twelfth of July. It was a sloping decrease as as the nighttime usage was used. Then as the solar PV started to kick back in, you can see that, that orange arc um, of the bars there. You can see the state of charge lifted up in the uh, in the middle of the day and took us up towards 100%. And then uh, towards the end of the day, when the solar turned off, the battery percentage started to come down. And that's a fairly common picture as we go throughout the, throughout the days. <clears throat> Obviously, this is the summertime, so it'll be really interesting to see on the wintertime how this how this all works. But uh, that's the general picture that we've got so far. If we go right to the bottom, we can see that to the shore we sent nothing back. From the shore we received nothing because the shore was, connect was disconnected. The boat used 1.7 kilowatt hours of energy and the solar produced two. So it wasn't a very high usage day. Let's see what we can see. What's today been like? Okay, yeah, so we had more consumption today. So shore is zero on both again, but we've got 4.4 kilo hours of consumption on the boat and 2.8 from the sun directly. Obviously, we've still got the rest of the day because this is kind of middle of the day as I record this. So we've still got the rest of the day to, to go. But that's the that's how the boat's been doing. And uh, that gives you a bit of an insight into what you could get with the Victron side of things. So we we'll hope you do many more of these types of systems. Um, hopefully not all of them on a, uh, a very small narrow boat <laughs> but we are looking forward to doing more off-grid stuff with lemon energy so if you do want an off-grid system either on a property or on anything like this then drop us a message uh, normal routes either leave us a comment or drop us a message to info at ovalrenewables.com and we'll come back to you and we can give you your very own off-grid system either on a scale like this one or a much bigger scale or maybe even a small scale Anything is possible. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.